Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Blizzard ANZ Twitch. It is the final night of ANZ HGC qualifiers. At the end of tonight, the best in the region will be cemented. Five teams will be going through to join juggernauts just like Crimson and Nomia in the Premier Division, the big boys, the big leagues, the top of the table in the region. Outlaws is another big name in there, and we just can't wait to see who it is. My name is Kit Fox. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm joined tonight by my co-caster for game number one, Vandy. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks, Kit. And as you said, I'm excited to see who the remaining five teams will join that Premier League starting not the next week because we go for a bit of break, but the week after. So just very excited to see. I mean, we've got, it's interesting if you everyone's been keeping up to date with sort of the standings. We do have a couple of teams where short of a major upset, it looks like their spots are pretty much cemented in, but I think it's the matchups that people want to see because it'll sort of give people an idea of power rankings. That too. And uh, I just got to whisper that all of the games that we are featuring tonight, players, well, the teams rather, do actually have a chance of either qualifying or not qualifying. So the games that will be on stream tonight will actually influence the results. So that is uh, a little bit of extra spice on your mm. ANHGC stake for tonight. But Vandy, game number one that we're about to jump into, just while we wait for the players to get in, is going to be Neko Mimi versus Downfall. Now, this is not quite a top of the table clash. It's probably. Just one rung below that, it's third versus fourth at the moment, but regardless, both of these teams will frothen to cement their place in the top spots. Exactly right, and what this can also do is just benefit any sort of seeding that may take place as well. It's just good to make sure that you can give yourself as much of an advantage going to the Premier League as possible. Also, like I said, it's just a good chance as well to sort of try out some sort of comps that you're really looking forward to utilizing against these teams. Because if you're quite evenly matched, it could be, you know, the time to maybe take a risk where you otherwise may not. Mm. That's it. I mean, we could see some uh, some off-meta compositions. I mean, Hanzo has been bullying his way in lately. Unfortunately, Maeve is banned. I mean, five days in, she got hit by the nerf train. And uh, it, was, it was no surprise. I mean, she still is the overpower but it is week two of the band which means it'll be available for the start of the season yeah she will and i think it's uh not a touch of being i guess overpowered but definitely she did need some tuning coming mm. straight out of uh, the stables if you will and i guess a lot of her inherent sort of strengths lie in just that sort of crowd control that she can give but more importantly just sort of bring you closer into your team not really letting you escape and that could be quite frustrating to play against so i do like the changes that they made i feel like she's a little bit more balanced but we won't be seeing her in tonight's competitive play blaze was something that actually mm. surprisingly i didn't really see a lot of during the competition even when he did mm. become available and i'm wondering if that's not because he's more of an ace of people's sleeves because i feel like he offers a lot in the terms of um the tanks that we have available mm. but yeah, haven't seen too much of him, and I wonder if that's just because that prioritization of ETC so much in their meta currently. I mean, he, he's extremely strong, but then you see the often the massive counter picks coming out because ETC doesn't really show too many cards up your own sleeve in terms of your team composition when the draft comes out. So he's very easy to sort of draft around. I mean, Li Ming with Wave of Force has been a, a, a common counter for that. But uh, I, I just think Blaze is more so used for his sustainability. He's more of a soloer than he mm. is uh, more of a... I mean, he has a ton of HP and, and a ton of survivability, but after that charge and, and the flame is down, he's very easily seed. And I think that's why he's, uh, he he's just hasn't found his footing in the meta, unfortunately, mm. so far. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and it, the same thing could be said for Garrosh, where we didn't really yeah. see a lot of play. He did get a couple of sort of tweaks, changes, and then all of a sudden we started to see him explode onto the scene, and he was just working so well when that double support meta was kind of in its height. And then to the point where Blizzard also were like, okay, we need to sort of down-tune him a little bit because people are just prioritizing him so much. So very, very interesting to see with tanks like that if it's not performing the way, I guess, Blizzard's wanting where well, you know everyone's sort of a fair peg everyone can have a fair go and no one feels too overpowered then definitely they'll give him some changes i find him a very interesting tank and the reason why mm. i said is because he's just got so much sustainability and as well as the sustainability he can give for his team something very important as well that bunker can be utilized to mitigate so much burst damage if you time it right the entry mm. of it so it's, it's things like um, a pyroblast and things like that. you don't really have many tools in the game mm. to negate something like that 
Well, speaking of Burst and AoE, we are actually going over to Infernal Shrines as the map for this showdown between Neko Mimi and Downfall. We're just getting a player on in the lobby. One more to make their way in for Neko Mimi, and then we'll get the ball rolling. But Vandy, when you think Infernal Shrines, you think the big Punisher coming out, bum, 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 <laughs> making his way in. you got the little dudes around the shrine. So what yep. things come to mind? You want point control, and you want some wave clear. So mages, Absolutely. they come to mind. Your KT, your Gul'dan, even your Valor with that mm -hmm. multi-shot build. She can definitely come into her own. Absolutely, and mm. exactly as you said, if you can control that objective and if you can control the area, the zoning sort of area around that shrine can be very, very difficult for a team to sort of engage and fight with you, especially if you do have poke on your hand. So as you said, poke, AoE, as well as wave clear, that's something that we're going to see prioritized a lot on Infernal Shrines. And it's interesting because, you know, we always had picks like Li Ming, people like, oh, you know, I don't feel like she's too good on this map. We always used to have the argument. I think she's just fine. It's just how you play her. So you can come up with some very, very interesting strategies. And I think once we get Maeve out on the mm. floor of Infernal Shrines, I can already see yeah. her pulling people right back into the Punisher's Leap for those stuns and just utilizing them yeah. as almost like a sixth member of your team if you do win that objective. That Warden's Cage ability around the points, it's almost, if you mm -hmm. almost park yourself straight dead center on top of the shrine, <laughs> it's almost a perfect cage. You can either keep them in or, you know, keep them out. You can build that, that wall or then you can open the floodgates and allow them in. But then, yeah. but then that opens it up for the wombo combo. So a Hanzo Dragon Strike. Mm -hmm. Now, when Hanzo first came out, the comments were flying around that we, you know, could probably use a little bit of a buff to his Dragon <laughs> Strike. And then it actually happened. And it, albeit he got a, a scatter arrow nerf at the same time, but mm -hmm. that came in. And then all of a sudden, we see Hanzo is almost a priority ban. Yeah, Hanzo, like you said, he's just been a priority ban. There's also that burst damage and armor shred that people were yeah. finding was being too strong to deal with, especially when he could penetrate through shields. So well, I'm just getting the whispers that we're ready to yeah, go we so are. we can continue the discussion in game, but let's get game number one for the evening started. Oof, ladies and gentlemen, let's get it on like Donkey Kong. This will determine who is going to be cementing their spot in the ANZ Premier Division here in the HGC God, I love me some Heroes Esports. We've got Neko Mimi versus Downfall on the blue side. Neko Mimi, Downfall on the red. Downfall a third. Neko Mimi currently fourth. So both teams still in contention to either A, make it, or B, potentially not make it tonight, Vandy. And that's just something, I guess, like a place that you didn't want to be. I mean, I was talking about perhaps you want to take a risk. And the reason why I was sort of saying that is because this is your chance to make it into the Premier League. And that's a big deal. The next chance that you'll get will be after the season finishes and you try to promote from open division up into Premier. So it's do or die for some teams tonight. And like I said, we could see some very interesting strategies. Like yeah. last week where we saw Chogal come out and we were all like, what? And everyone remembers that sort of core throw if you will almost just move like what are you doing like very interesting to see i believe that was downfall as well playing that one so well, let's see now how they're going to be dealing with this <laughs> i don't want to see any more core throws i know that our uh our admin of exium was actually having a little bit of a chat with fellow admin blank earlier behind the scenes behind the curtain that we've got here at gamestar and uh <laughs> And he, he was saying, I want to see the Cho Gal bring that out again. You know, it was so almost <laughs> Korean meta. I mean, there was once upon a time where, you know, no other region played Cho Gal except for Korea. And then it was picked up here uh, for one or two games. Uh, oh, sorry, one or two weeks in the ANZ region. Yeah, but, uh, the with team... NMD. Yep, I remember yeah. them doing that. When Oriel was pretty much in her sort of heyday right there. But let's have a quick chat about the bands that I can see coming out already. We're starting to see Downfall open up with that grey main band. And although he has been changed a little bit, a little bit of a nerf across the board, he's still quite a strong pick. He just, as I said, excels at all roles quite well in that sort of assassin space. He's got the poke. He's got the burst. He also can execute. So very, very good. Just a great all-rounder, and if you're yeah, playing something like Infernal Shrines, also that poke can really start to add up. That Uther ban as well, that's an interesting mm. one. But now just looking at this, this is a very smart response by Downfall. Since so the Uther's gone and the Genji's open, they're happy to take this Shimada brother, but Hanzo is still on yeah. the board. I mean, you could see Downfall there. They were actually hovering over the Hanzo, and there it is. Boom, they're going to lock that one in alongside with Imperial. So depending on what sort of gameplay they want to go for here, will they lock down the Genji with that judgment, or will they be playing the point control game with Sanctification on top of the little dudes, get Hanzo to farm them up? Potentially we could see a Stormbow build depending on what Neko and Mimi go for here. I think one more mobile champion just might push that one out a little bit. 
because Genji, extremely slippery to hit. Uh, Tracer is another one that comes to mind, which is hard to hit, but I don't think we'll be seeing both of those Overwatch heroes come in here, because that would be borderline broken, but EZ and Malfeel are going to be locked in for Neko Mimi, so it's not too bad so far. They've got a solid front line, solid solo Lano in Malfeel, and uh, that added cleave to his auto attack there. What do you make of that one? It sort of may it, it sort of throws into question the the solo soul rip. Mm, it does, and I mean mm. I'm really liking the changes. I mean Skippy and I were having a bit of a fiddle yesterday in a couple of quick matches, and I really liked the way it played out. Seeing it applied on a professional level always going to be something different, but so far I like the direction of it, and I think it just offers Malthiel just that little bit extra, something that he was lacking because it was great to have that single target damage. But I feel like this cleave, especially if everyone's sort of stacking out, because he is a melee hero. So you really do want to be getting in there and dealing as much damage as possible. Mm. But I'm a little bit worried with that Uther now across the board. I mean, arguably he's one of the best counters to Genji. Now you do need, yes, the is great to have, but we want to see a little bit more hard crowd control coming out now, especially if you're looking at the likes of that Genji and ETC. You want to shut both of those down. This Tiger span, this yeah. sort of indicates perhaps there's going to be more tanks, more frontliners coming out on the side of Nekomimi, but perhaps not because you've got that Malthiel there. And what does he do? He shreds tanks. That's that's exactly right, Vandy. And no amount of armor shred is going to, you know, put a damper on his day. He's just going to sit there, rip souls, tormented out for days, and just have a fantastic time, especially when mm -hmm. the shrine is in play. I mean, you, you hit up those guardians, those little dudes, as we coin them here in the region. Love it. <laughs> and he has just got sustained for days. So Malthiel is a huge pick. And I was thinking just that a mage would be something that Nekomimi wouldn't be too shabby to go for here. I mean, something like the, the Kael'thas with the Gul'dan taken off the board. I mean, the Kael'thas is, is, is monstrous. you got that Phoenix for not only point control, but as well as the farming. And should you go convection, uh, convection and stack that all up, you're going to be dealing massive amounts of chunks. But downfall, locking in Jaina, going for exactly what I was just talking about, the mage. The, uh, yeah. Yeah, getting the mage and for the exact same reasons that you brought Kael'thas up for. So you do have the area of control. Jaina offers a little bit more hard crowd control because for Kael'thas, it's all in that gravity lapse. With Jaina, she can spec up and then yeah. she can also get her cone of cold to apply a root. Plus she does get that ring of frost. So can be very good for a team fight breaking out just to be able to lock someone down. And very good as well when you want to kite the Genji or the ETC, especially Malthiel though. That's the number one thing I'm seeing. Mm. When I look at that Jane, and I look at that Malthiel, he's going to have a hard time now. Jane just needs to apply pressure through her poke and Malthiel's just going to be having a hard time trying to engage. He needs to really just get in there and commit, but that puts him at risk. Mal Lucio is not a bad pick to lock in for the support role, but I would have really liked to have seen Malfury compliment that that lineup that that downfall have actually got going there you apply the roots on top of a jaina blizzard and hanzo just to line them up it doesn't matter who your last pick is you're just going to be dealing massive massive amounts of hp off your opponent but regardless lucio it's not so bad i mean you've got the works you've got movement speed you've got yourself that uh that, that aoe heal and it's not often uh, sorry it's not unlikely that we don't see lucio at the top uh, of the heels, it doesn't matter who he's up against, just because of that amp it up. And once he gets Rejuven Essentia, um, uh, he's one of the strongest in the game. So yeah. it's back over to Neko Mimi at the moment, Vandy. Who do you think they'll be going for? With Neko Mimi, sorry, I think you might have the teams confused. We're actually back to Downfall. So Neko Mimi is on the red, and we've got oh, Downfall on the blue. No, that's fine. So in terms of downfall, what do they need? So I'm already a little bit worried with that Lucio. He can act sort of with that Jaina combination. They can act the way Arthas does, where you really just get stuck. If someone's caught out of position, you can really collapse on them quite quickly. What I'm thinking is they really do need someone to back up their Genji. Now, looking at this Junkrat, I like that. That's going to be that zoning control around Infernal Shrines. I wouldn't have really mm. expected that, though. But the Stukov, I really do like. Because as I said, if someone's kind of considered out of, uh, I guess, position, mm. You've got that Stukov to really be able to help and just sort of peel for you. With that lurking arm as well, you can really just make sure that you're making it very, very difficult to set up around the objective. So that can help shut down Jaina and Hanzo and force them to really move and reposition. I like it for exactly those reasons, Vandy. The words right out of my mouth. I mean, <laughs> that, that lurking arm is just going to provide massive amounts of point control. It's also going to allow for, like, the peel for the mouthfeel. I mean... <laughs> the combo potential is absolutely monstrous. An ETC mosh on top of that, that would just be that just icing on the cake, like the cherry on top of the whipped cream. But it's now over back to, sorry, Neko Mimi to lock in their final. I mean, their damage is not bad. They could use another melee, another frontliner. A Sonya comes to mind. She's still on the board. Fantastic for controlling the points. Arthas, not so bad. 
I like that. It really now yeah. gives them that hard engage. It gives a buddy for Tyrell to go into. I really do like Neko Mimi's lineup. I was just hoping, because I said I wasn't really expecting Junkrat. I understand what he's trying to do, but I would have liked to see another front line because ETC, if he doesn't get any sort of backup when he goes in, he's so, so squishy. And as well with that Stukov, yes, he can dish out a lot of healing, but it kind of spreads and needs to sort of be spread to maximum team members to get the benefit of that heal. Sometimes you just don't have time for that setup. up burst heal would be better. Something like that Uther, which was very early yeah. banned out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, look, I, I don't mind Stukov because you've got you're playing a very dive heavy game here on the side of downfall. You've got that Malthiel. So his job once he hits level ten is a no brainer. He's going to go tormented souls and stick the front line. ETC another no brainer, and Genji will be diving as well. That just allows that healing pathogen to spread its way around. And then once Stukov gets the talent where he increases the healing per pustule popped, I mean it's going to uh, sorry per pathogen popped. It's going to be uh, incredible once that talent's yeah. completed. I, I can't wait so to see. Much healing. It depends what build he goes for, though. I mean, th that then takes away from the lurking arm, Vandy. It does indeed. But uh, you've got Koality there. He is the one that was playing Lucio when no one else wanted to touch him. It's one of his favorite supports. And I mean, this is the Koality special right here. So they really do need to respect that. One thing else that I really like about the Lucio pick, it's very smart as well when you're trying to shut down the Genji because Genji works through getting those resets similar to Li Ming to dish out his optimal maximum amount of damage. With Lucio, with Sound Barrier, you get that massive shield, and that's a Genji's worst nightmare. All you want to do is just execute the target, mm. continue dishing out your damage. Lucio can really put the brakes on that. So something, if quality can definitely time his Sound Barriers right, oh, Genji might struggle. There's no shield strip talents on the side of Downfall either, so that means Tyrael is going to have a field day. Lucio especially, going to absolutely love it. But let's get it on, ladies and gentlemen. It's round number one of the final week of qualifiers. Downfall on blue, Neko uh, Mimi on red, we got Magic Gnome, Shrek is Love, Superfish, Blaze, and Hill on it down. And on the red side, we have Team Neko Mimi with Stump God playing Jaina, Chris Ow Ow on Diriel, <laughs> ADS on Arthur's, Free Quality on Lucio, and Touch Me on Hanzo. Tyrael just uh, being a good frontliner, throwing out the Elder Ruins might, giving himself a little bit of uh, a little bit of vision to see what's going on. The punch on the old-fashioned ANZ brawl in the middle to start things off. Not so much going down, the lurking arm comes out, but the split is good for downfall. They go and soak it on up, and the XP is a dead heat at this point. Yep, now in terms of just like how they've sort of set themselves up, what we can see with that Lucio, it allows you to sort of have four men in one lane if you so choose because you can make such quick rotations. So you can really just be effective, push a lane, and then try to see if you can out-rotate your opponent like that. So that's something as well that Downfall just needs to be wary of. They can just also make sure that they don't get caught out trying to leave one member behind to soak all three lanes at once. But it looks like, so you can already see that Malthil, he's down there, Magic Gnome's going, but this is sort of what they want to do. They want to roam as that four men. See if now they can pick off that Malthil, but he's got good map sense. That's what you need to have. Make sure that you're not just caught by the rotation. But that's a game you can see that Neko Mimi are trying to play here. Great communication from Downfall there to communicate the rotation that was coming down from Neko Mimi. That allowed Magic Gnome just to mosey his way back out and survive. You know, these teams now thinking about the Kazaras already. Magic Gnome peels and that's going to be taken quite swiftly now. Neko Mimi get to work on theirs and almost with surgical precision that these two teams they know exactly what they're doing, they know what their game's about, and they want this spot, Then You can see that the way they take these camps, it is timed now with the set spawns on them. Yeah, absolutely. With the sort of changes coming into place, ooh, Blaze is going in for a power slide now, and Chriso, mm. wow, he's getting silenced. The damage is still getting dished up, but they just cannot follow up because it's under the turrets right there. But those are some of the pokes coming out, and instead it's Junkrat that falls, taken out, mm. 1v1 by ADS in that top lane. Yeah, up in the top lane, Arthur's just going for the 1v1. And I'm having a look at Junkrat's trap there. It wasn't actually utilized, still below the shrub there. So, ADS coming out on top there. First blood over to Echo Mimi. He'll be quite thankful with that EXP advantage that he's getting there. Now, the peel is back on again. Neko Mimi, they set their sights to soaking. They're going to be focused on that level 7 talent tier. Once they hit that, which they should do first, Vandy, they're going to try to force and engage on their opponent's downfall. Just as the shrine pops up now, still two levels away, they're going to rotate down. They're going to actually interrupt Magic Gnome down on the bottom. Caster as he gets taken down. Kowali, Trump God, and Chriso combining. So they already learnt their lesson, did Neko Mimi. They saw Magic Gnome soloing up the Kazarus on his side and rotated. 
and even better now, with this pressure that they've got from the Kazra camp, they want to see if they can get some push happening and net some extra experience, forcing two members now to rotate down to the bottom lane. They don't mind about the shrine, they can rotate that, they just want to constantly have that pressure because then when they rotate on, that Kazra camp will still need to be dealt with. So that's really unfortunate for Magic Gnome to get caught by that rotation there. Well, they realize that they need to soak your downfall because, like you said, that Kaz was just, uh, causing them all kinds of grief down there in the bottom lane. Now they activate the Shrine. Now they can get themselves back in front then. Should they get the Shrine before their opponents, they just might ride that Punisher. Granted, the level one is only... Well, that's obviously the weakest, so it doesn't really give you too much in a way of push, but, you know, that's one or two towers that you could claw back right now, staring down the barrel of a full level disadvantage, level 7, just about to be kicked by Neko and Mimi. And once that's on, this shrine is pretty much dead. Yep. Absolutely right. So I do like what Downfall were doing by trying to get at least what they could for the meantime. Definitely over that halfway mark. But this is where they need to be careful because the fights want to go. Touch me solo, but he doesn't manage to fall. Stump God as well. She's been oh. pushed to position. Hill, look at the Shimada brothers just dodging and weaving and avoiding death. Slippery little suckers they are. They both get away with the sliver of HP. Meanwhile, the engage is back on Chriso. Wow. Going deep with the Elder Ruins might there on Tyrael. Hanzo gets picked in that fight in the Shrine actually goes over to downfall here. This is what I'm talking about, Van. The wave they were hoping to catch, they're going to ride it, they're going to level up the talent tiers, and they're going to hopefully get themselves a fort out of it. Absolutely. Very well played by Downfall as well. To send two members just have them there tying up Nekomini. Nekomini really did overstay the bottom. Once those front two turrets have been taken, it's really all you need to do. You could have then rotated trying to get two kills off anyone trying to lurk and linger and stay there. But as you said, it's just an early game Punisher. It does take out the front wall, and with that, the experience now swings in favour to downfall. So you can see, it's still anyone's game. Indeed, now the engage is back on over on Neko Mimi's Kazuas. Chriso Wow is deep and gets taken down. Genji for a while, picking up the kill there. Probably going to do a little bit of damage, but nothing too much to phase plays as they go over and take Kazuas. Vandy, it's starting to look good. The seesaw starting to tip in favor of Downfall. Yes, they were behind, but they got that shrine, pulled the rug out from under Necromimi, and all of a sudden, they're the ones with an almost level advantage. Yep, and with Chris O'Wow getting picked up there, you can see that's the danger of being caught up by the lurking arm. And with the talent choices as well, growing infestation within my reach, that lurking arm, the area that it covers now is massive, as well as the range. Shrek is love, he can just sit and make sure that he can use it to zone without really putting himself at too much danger. So that's something that really you need to worry about, and also why Stuko can shine so well on this map. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Magic Gnome is uh, copping a little bit of heat, but in comes the rotation. The boys have rolled up with a carload, and... So, Kowality trying to get away, got the Nike from Lucio Extreme. So is <laughs> Overwatch heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Look at Kowality go. Accelerando, just mm. showing his worth right there, getting him out. He was on, like, one health, if that. And lives to tell the tale. In that top lane as well, something I wanted to mention was that Superfish should be able to hold his own, as well as just easily wave clear, but the fact that ADS was able to bully him early and win that 1v1 just shows that he just needs to be able to get out and use the poke that he has. It's really going to be his advantage against that Arthas, but Superfish as well, just dishing out that damage, trying to spot where members of Nekomimi are. Superfish now just uh, lobbing a few bombs on the Junkrat, just doing what a good Junkrat does, and that has been absolute nuisance with the poke from the back line. Meanwhile, the invade is on here. Ballsy stuff here from Downfall. As they go in the invade, they're actually going to get the Shaman camp, so that is Big Vandy. They've hit level 10, they're about to hit level 11, and it's just climbing. Yep, with that level 10, you can really then use your presence to bully on the map. So they saw that, they knew that Nekomimi, they wanted to fight, they had the heroics. That's a huge advantage that they get, and they were saying, all right, bring it on. So they're able to go for things like this. Now, looking at the heroics, some interesting talent choices that we can look at. So we've got the massive shark coming out from Stukov here, and last rides coming out from Oh, Ads is going to get caught, Riptide has cemented, and he gets sent back to the bench. Poor old Arthas. Now that is a man disadvantage and downfall as the shrine cups up 15 seconds and ticking. They're timing these ones very, very well. Arthas will be back up and uh, on the horse coming back. He a will. Handy advantage to have here. But something that had to be consumed, Army of the Dead was used there. Yeah. So it's still going to be on cooldown, so it won't be able to engage as soon as he's back. He needs to wait for that cooldown. And that just is a little bit of just. I feel bad there. Look at this coming out from Flays, the one man wash. Oh, he does not care. In goes the Dragon's Arrow, connects on three. It wasn't exactly long range, but hey, a stun is a stun. 
and it's gonna secure two kills. The ETC and the Stukov get taken down. Genji dashes away. And this, Vandy, it's on a knife edge this game at the moment. It's a seesaw game. It's tipped all the way back now. Or not all the way, but slightly back in favor of Neko Mimi. They need to soak it up and get back on even Stevens because the talent tiers, Vandy, the talent tiers are where it's all at. They are indeed, but Magic Gnome, while all the action was happening in the top lane, just happily chugging away, just going on this point. That's sort of the strategy I can start to see here. But now, you can see Nico and Mimi, they're looking to engage. They have the men, like the numbers advantage. They want to see if they can get more kills, or at least bully them off the point. They only need one more, though, on the side of downfall. Yeah, they do, can they secure it? But the zoning game is good here on the side of Nico and Mimi, and they secure it for now. But in goes Junkrat, that's going to be a rip tie, yeah securing at the point that hey is that a last rights malfield we're seeing it yes, is that's what i said yep so the last rights has been picked up and hill he's using his dragon blade to try and get plays is very very low now and with members of nekamun collapsing they do get the kill the silence is good but hill is trying to dive in as well but he gets healed at the last moment magic gnome now just slinking away there doesn't really have much mana so that's going to be well probably his downfall should he decide to engage here the punisher though coming out to play doing work and I'm really liking this lurking arm build here from Stukov. It's zoning them out. Downfall, that's where they're winning this point at the moment, Vandy. That's their game plan that they're going for. Once you're silenced, you can't really... You, you, there's nothing you can do, literally. You're silenced. And then from then on, you can just get that snowball rolling. The damage is paused on like Punish is doing now. But that just allows Downfall to get their uh, get their map control on. They're going to take their Kazuras away from Neko Mimi. They're going to rotate down to the bottom, do the exact same thing, get a double push going on, and just make Neko Mimi think about more than one thing at a time. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you, Kit, but couldn't agree with you more, sorry. But one thing as well, we're seeing that the Ring of Frost was not picked up. Instead, we're going for the Water Elemental. And I think what that was really picked up for was, as I said, to really put the kite on Ivan, if not Malthiel, onto that Genji as well. Make sure that he couldn't really close the gap. But then also I'm seeing with Hanzo, we had, do have that Dragon's Arrow coming out. So the way they execute their fight back in that top lane, it was really well done because there was just so much over committing from Flays to try and get Koali, just that one main kill, but the response from Nekomi was so good. Unfortunately, as I said, because there were still two members down working on the shrine, by the time they're able to rotate, even with Lucio's speed boost, it was not gonna be enough. So that's really where they're starting to lose the objectives. They need to make sure that they're not getting too caught up in these side fights that Downfall trying to draw them out into. We could have a scrap in the middle here very, very soon. The Howling Blast goes out from ADS. Doesn't really connect, but that lurking arm it's really setting the, the the tone of the fights here. That Stukov, if he's left unchecked on that back line, the dive game is not incredibly strong on the side of Neko Mimi. You've got the Sanctification that's being picked up by Tyrael, so other than Hanzo, you know, potentially leaping over a wall or a Lucio team bull rush, there's not really much to, to disrupt that Stukov. He can just sit there and suck, you know, the, the arm can just suck the silence up. And I mean, if you do look at the composition that Neko Mimi are running as well, a lot of it as well is focused on that sort of poke before you then engage with the burst that you have on hand. I mean, you've got the Jaina as well as that Hanzo. They just want to poke you down until they can execute you. With Arthas, yes, they can run in, but they need to make sure that they can secure a kill before they engage in commit. Because as you said, that Stuka with the massive shove can very easily turn the tables otherwise. Arthur's still only at nine stacks on the Frost Presence as well, so still a while away from that power spike from and from his Frozen Tempest quest, uh, sorry, Frozen Wastes quest as well. So once he hits that, I think there'll be a lot more, uh, a lot more stronger around the team fight scenarios. But they're trying to engage here. They're a level down. Will it pay off? The Howling Blast goes in, but the face melt is good from Flays. Just creates a little bit of space, and what was to be Vandy shall wait as Magic Gnome again doing what a good Malfail does, and that is solo and camps. Yep, clear out the cans, clear out the waves, and just as little grouping with the team as possible until it comes to a team fight. That's really what you want to do as Malfeel. And um, Neko Mimi as well, because they're rotating so much in a group, it's really just allowing him to net that XP. So they're really respecting Neko Mimi, the presence that Downfall have, and they don't want to get engaged on. Now, this is the shrine, I think, that will really decide the rest of the game. This is where Neko Mimi, as I said, they can't afford to be late to this one and just let Magic Gnome, as well as the Junkrat, just sit and start um, working on the shrine before they even get a chance to be on it, because there's too much poke to really finish it off. It is definitely strong here, but Superfish on that Junkrat, the Riptide, we saw what it was able to do around the Shrines the, the last time it was out, and without, you know, a proper solid, almost race single-style DPS on the side 
of uh, of Nekomimi. They're going to really struggle to take it out. You haven't got that Rainy, you haven't got the Valor, you've got the Hanzo, whose reload time is absolutely abysmal unless you go for the uh, the Redemption build, which he has done, so that'll assist a little bit. Catling Blast going in, but it's not going to be able to do much, Vandy, and the Invade is going to be good again for Downfall. Yep, just respecting with that level 16, they always seem to be down a talent here when they're looking for a fair fight, but that's not what Downfall has in mind. They want to utilize any advantage that they get and really just slow it. You can see neither team wants to overcommit, but more so Downfall are able to play this one a little bit more aggressively because their team fight so far has been much stronger. So now the Shrine game is on and still half a level away from level 16 here, so Neko Mimi, they need to make a call. Are they going to roll this dice? Do they want to, you know, Flirt with the devil, you know, so to speak here. They are a talent tier down. They are going to do so. ADS on the front line, and it actually, it actually works for, for, for now. Downfall, they peel off the shrine, and they decide to go back because, hey, the last thing they want is Jaina getting her blizzard down, and not only dealing damage to the front line, but also getting the frags on those little dudes. Now the engage is good. The Howling Blasts are complete with ETC goes in. Place collects Jaina with the Mosh Pit. And in comes a very, very good sanctification to save her from uh, to save Stump God from certain death. Now the tide has been turned. Magic Gnome, the sustain is not strong enough, and Malfail gets done. And Flays, he's forced to uh, slide his way out. Will he get picked up? The spawn, the pustule is not enough. And two quick frags. Bandy, Neko, Mimi just edged their way back in front. And they were down that 16. They did not yet have it. What really decided that team fight there was Chris O'Wall's sanctification. It was so perfectly timed and it just blocked so much damage. I could already see the Dragon Blade out from Genji as well as Last Rite's pop with the sanctification going off. So none of that damage went through and the execute didn't happen. And then as you said, with all those cooldowns, suddenly Neko Mimi, they came out of the sanctification and they won the fight because downfall, they were completely out of steam. That was an insanely well fought fight. Arthur needs to make a call here. Is he just going to soak up Junk Poke or is he going to get back on that shrine? Because even though Downfall have been out of this shrine contention for a while now, Vandy, Neko Mimi just slowly lacking a little bit in terms of clear. They're now one away. They should secure it. They do. It is going to be a Frozen Punisher that makes his way down the top lane. John Cena is out, ladies and gentlemen. The lurking arm is not going to be enough to stop him. He's going to be knocking on your door, huffing and puffing and knocking them in. Because here, come Neko Mimi. And with this Frozen Punisher as well, that's one you need to respect because you do not want to be chilled and frozen into spot. That's just a free engage waiting to happen, especially because there's so much more Frost coming your way with that Arthas, with that Jaina. So very, very weird that one. They'd want to bait this one over the wall and safely deal with it as much as possible. But this Punisher is going to be quite healthy as a mid-game Punisher. And it's going to be packing a punch. It's actually not too bad. It jumps over the wall and actually focuses on Flay, so that is, uh, you know, sort of consolation fires for Downfall. If the Punisher jumps over, you're one going Look on... Look at where Chris is! Fire. Yeah, he's, he's way, way back at the moment. He needs to get up there on Material. He's just waiting to throw an Eldruin's Might in. It's because he's below less than half HP, that's probably why he doesn't want to give up the frag, because it can be a morale thing, Vandy, once you see your team, you know, drop a player. You still might have... You know, some sort of hope, but it just takes the wind out of your sails. And now the pin is going to be pulled on this attack. But Hill, he has something to say about that. Dashing in is the Genji, and he's trying to take touch with me. A good Howling Blast will be enough to stop them in their tracks. But here we go. The backhand play is good. And Malthiel gets taken down. Neko Mini just, just could reignite the fire again. They've got themselves two frags. ETC and Melth are done, and they're going to resume attacking on this, on this keep, Andy. Dragon's arrow was very, very nice and engaging, and I also like that the Punisher was not yet dealt with. So what that meant was that it was just not an optimal position for Downfall to fight in. So if one of their team members was still waiting, there goes Arthas, out he goes. And I mean, sorry, you were saying Chris was out the back, but actually when I said where he was, he was actually trying to engage with his team, going with the Punisher, just do a little bit of poke, but I was worried that he was just going to get taken out for free before he did back out. That's how he was so, so low. So just something you need to be worried about uh, and weary about as well. Lucky didn't fall, and that also then meant that downfall. They were looking for the fight, but not yet ready with all their team members, so they just got instantly turned around and engaged upon. The poke game is so good here on the side of downfall that with three members, they almost, almost, just at that last second there, they almost held onto that keep, but it was not to be. But for <laughs> me, they'll be happy with that. But I mean, you could see how much that lurking arm and, and junk rat spam was doing. Yeah, just in that clear as well. And all I wanted to say was with that Punisher, you didn't need to be too worried. Yes, it was a frozen Punisher. Yes, I said it was quite healthy, but you do have a mouth deal on your side. And as long as he's alive, you can really, with that percentile based damage, shred it down. Quick smart, but that poke, 
as you see, with that lurking arm, it was just sort of limited in where uh, he could position, Shrekers up could position to get sort of optimum reach. And if you're not really able to shut down that poke, you can just do so much. Oh, big call, big call. Flays goes in, he whips the power slide, but Genji pulls the trigger on the Dragon Blade, and that ult is going to be down. Vandy, just before that uh, failed engage was on, I just wanted to say that this is where Downfall have actually had the advantage over Nico Mimi. It's map control. They've been ballsy with their engages. We've seen them take Shamans and Kazaras away from Neko Mimi all night. They've just done it again there. The engage was questionable, so now they're going to be without that Dragon Blade for another 80 seconds. And so, if Neko Mini want to engage, they've got everything at their disposal. All alts are up. They've got minions pushing the top lane. You got catapults doing their thing. This is looking pretty sweet for them. They're about to hit level 20. They're going to get that well before downfall. They need to pull the trigger and pull it now. Yep, if they capture this shrine, there's a good chance that they're just going to end with this Punisher right here, right now, unless there's a bit of an upset coming out from Downfall. Downfall's best chance is to see if they can force something. I mean, I don't think they're able to wait this one out, but luckily they still have a couple of seconds before the shrines. They can get level 19, and then they just need one more level before it's equalized with 20. You don't want to run to anything too brash. The Punisher will spawn in the middle lane, and they have that front structure still available, so that will really delay the Punisher being escorted in if worse comes to worse, and they have to let this one go to Nekomimi, but it would just be a real crying shame if they gave that one for free. The Magic Gnome is going to take the Shamans, and that'll just give, uh, it'll, it'll just buy a little bit of breathing space for that top lane. I mean, the Catapults, they're nasty, but Shamans, they soak a little bit of that. It's a little bit, it's not much, Cat is a better. But, <laughs> you know what's even better, Vandy? A <laughs> level 20 Punisher. Yep. With those heroic talents, sorry, with those storm talents being able to go with that. Look at this by Touch Me now. He wants to poke at Superficial, not let him uh, push for free, not let him get that experience for free, as well as make sure that that Shaman Camp is stopped in its tracks. So this is good to see, and already we've got the little dudes being picked up. So the call has been made by Downfall to mostly just let this one go for free. They do not want to be caught in a fight here, however. Now they need to be able to... Mm, there we go. Frozen Waste has finally been picked up there by ADS. This is the power spike we're talking about. All the Howling Blast. Just kissing the heels there of Magic Gnome on the mouthfield, but the Army of the Dead has been invested, so that's gonna be, uh, you know, it'll last for a little bit longer, Vandy, but you, you wanted that under the towers here. That's where you want, you know, as much survivability as you can possibly have. Even with a level 20 Punisher and a Lucio at your disposal, that Army of the Dead could have come in clutch. It's now down for 50 more seconds. Well, as well with this Punisher now, I'm just getting a little bit worried because we've got so much healing coming out from quality and now as well the sound barriers will be on an even lower cooldown. So just expect so much damage to be able to be mitigated. Punisher is dropping however and this is looking good on the side of downfall. They need to just make sure that they do not get engaged just yet. They want to deal with that Punisher before they try to look for any sort of a fire. Well Arcane Punisher, probably the most dangerous of all the Punisher. Yeah, it's questionable. If, if look at know, how low they all are. Just from yeah, I know. Like, I was just about to say, look at Flazer's HP there on the ETC. He's the one with the biggest health pool here, and he's just getting shredded like like a confidential document at the moment, Ben. <laughs> You've got three catters up in the top lane, which is going to force the rotation out from downfall. So we're not down and out yet, ladies and gentlemen. 21 and a half minutes into this game, we're going to do the dance again. This time, Nico and Mimi, they actually get their own Kazaras. This is good though. The next time both teams fight, they're on an equal talent tier advantage. And Downfall, they play that one quite smart. Instead of trying to go up, trying to force something, see if they could make a desperate play like Nick and Mimi did with the 15 versus 16 fight, they wanted to make sure they had that level 20. And a lot of, I think, where that decision making came from was because they had that front structure to work with. It gave them a lot more of that slowing and stopping power for the Punisher. With that keep not even going down, it's halfway, yes. But it definitely would have gone down if that was just an exposed keep ready to go or for the Punisher to stomp on into, and then it would have worked its way onto the core. Oh, hello. Hello. Neko Mimi taking a page out of Downfall's book. They're going to pinch the camp of their own. So, Siege in the mid lane, and they're going to push with that lurking arm, though. That's what I've got my eyes on, Bandy. It's, it's, it's really what is securing these defenses for Downfall at the moment. Without that and the Junkrat poke, they would be up creek without a paddle, but lucky for them, they're doing their thing. Now, there it is again, another lurking arm going in. Magic Gnome with extended soul rip range, not bad at all. Stump God trying to poke as Jaina does, but <laughs> Junkrat doing exactly the same thing. And for now, Vandy, this could be the win condition should they get one or two picks here. This game will go over to Neko Mimi. We could see the last fight on our hands right here, right now. The death timers are at a point where both teams are very, very respectful of that. With Neko Mimi, they still do have their front walls of the keeps ready, so that will delay a little bit more, but you still do not want to be in position where you are awkwardly trying to defend your keep. So with Neko Mimi, 
They're just playing this one cool. They're just waiting for the right opportunity. Downfall have a lot more to lose, however, and you can see that's why they're playing so, so passively at the moment. They do not want to commit into a fight unless they know they can win it because there's already an opening to that core in that top lane. And they're going to give that a little bit of an extra heave-ho with the Shaman camp of their own, so they'll get that pushing it down the top lane, but Vandy, this could be it. This could be the throw pit. There's no boss on this map, but the bottom Kazaras, will that be it? Jane is a little bit far away. Both guys goblining the Sonic Arrow will reveal, but they get all out to go over to Downfall. They'll just stick to their wave clear, put all their eggs in that basket. Need the team wanting to give up an inch here. There is so much on the line. And I mean, avert your eyes real quick to that Shaman camp pushing in the top lane, and I mean, it would have taken perhaps just one member to clear it out. Downfall is saying, let's all go together. We don't want to get out-rotated or caught out at all. So they just want to make sure that they clear their camp and not let it push because that's that open lane that I'm talking about and it's being escorted in by two catapults. Now they can take a shaman camp of their own and apply that counter pressure. But this is where things now, are you seeing sort of the reverse now? It was Necro Mimi that was rocking up late to these uh, objective fights. Now it's downfall for rocking up late. And by the time they join this fight, the objective may already be captured. This game has seesawed so many times. It's what we want here from Quality Esports from the ANZ region. But this shrine looking more and more like it's going to go over to Neko Mimi. Currently five little dudes away. But here come the cavalry downfall trying to pull the trigger. Flaze has missed the power slide and the shrine has been skewered by Neko Mimi. Now the trigger gets pulled. Junkrat on the back line with the rip tire. It goes in. ADS eats it with his teeth like a good tank. Nobody else took any damage. Meanwhile, Chris OW, oh sorry, Chris Wow is forced to Eldrons away and now Magic Gnome is too deep and they get taken down. Verdi, is that the win condition? He has actually taken, no one can stop there, so he's back into the fight. Meanwhile, John Cena down in the bot lane, he's getting a wiggle on. Touch Me has got the siege on with him and now the rotate comes down from downfall. Downfall they have to defend here and, and now it was a very, very awkward position that they found themselves in and that was just due to taking the Shaman camp in return. You just needed to defend it, you didn't really have to mess around too much in taking another objective. Yes, it's nice to have that pressure, but it's more important to try and see if you could fight for that objective right here. It's going to make it so much harder to defend Magic Gnome, look at him! He's just getting surrounded, he just cannot get away! He's taken a lot of damage, but that's Malfiel, and he's got the sustainability. He's surviving. No, he's down. The last right is not going to be enough. Flaze gets taken down. Vandy, one nail in the coffin, two nails in the coffin. A keep for good measure. This could be it. This definitely could be it. With two members now, and everyone working there on the core, even the sanctification for good measure. John Grant just trying to get them off the core, see if he can get that post. You can see it coming out. Even a massive shove coming. This is going to be it. Surely this is going to be it. Well, there is a shaman camp up in top lane, so there's no pressure from the catapults up top, but the core slowly but surely being taken down. Exclamation mark core. It is going to fall, and game number one of the night <laughs> is going to go over to Neko Mimi Vandy. What a match to start things off here. It was a good game, definitely, but I felt like it was a little bit anticlimactic towards the end because I thought it was going to be that huge objective fight at the end. But we just saw, like I said, it was them almost swapping places from where Neko and Mimi were late to the objective to where we saw downfall late to the objective. And I'm like, this is the last one. You need to make it count. This is the fight that will decide it for you. You didn't want to be in that awkward position because the punishers just get so much help. We can see two team members were just stuck with the mouth deal as well. And Flayers are trying to go and trying to see if they can start a fight. But the punish is hammering down their core. And what can you do? Everyone's split in so many different directions. Yeah, they uh, sort of run around with the, like chickens with their heads cut off once two or me uh, one or two members fall. That's exactly what we're talking about a couple <laughs> of fights before that. You can see early on Magic Gnome, he already got picked early on. He was way too deep, was forced to invest the nobody uh, could stop death. And then he came back, got picked again to start things off. Flays fell after that. And it was uh, just an avalanche from there. But Vandy... Special mention to Superfish, 242,000 yeah. siege damage on the Junkrat, 82,000 <laughs> hero damage, and 17k on the EXP. So fantastic play from that man, but unfortunately it wasn't enough, and Neko Mimi come out with the win. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot more Heroes of the Storm coming your way very, very shortly, but we're going to take a very, very short break. We've got more coming up after this. Vanny and I are going to sub out, and we're going to bring in Discon Kerr and GLP for the next game very, very shortly. Thank you.